In this video, I'd like to tell you about a good man. A friend of mine had introduced me one day to an elderly gentleman who was a preacher at a little country church. He was in his 80s, and uh, I had not known him previous until the introduction from a friend of mine. And when I would go out to get coffee, I would always hope that he would be there until I could sit with him and listen to some of his wisdom. He had been saved in a tuberculosis hospital when he was a young man. And he became a deacon in his church and was known throughout the community as a good man, somebody that you could really and truly depend on. A little later on in his life, he accepted the call to the ministry. And I used to talk with him, and he was one of those individuals when you sat down with him, uh, you could feel his wisdom, and you always felt good. So one day we were having a conversation, and he had been telling me something that uh, was touching me. And I told him, I said, um, you know, preacher, I said, um, you're a good man. And he got a stern look on his face. And he said, well, he said, I've had a problem with that. And I'm going to tell you a little story. He said, when I was a, a deacon, I used to try to do all I could do uh, for what I was supposed to do. And by doing that, people would be thankful that I was either there or whatever. And they would compliment me, but I didn't want to be complimented. And I didn't want to tell them that I didn't want to be complimented. And he said, when I became uh, a preacher and was pastoring a church, people would make statements similar to what you said. And he said, it really bothered me because he said, I've always tried to do right, but nobody's totally a good man. And he said that it was bothering him so bad that uh, he started to ask the Lord to relieve him of that burden. And he quoted a scripture from uh, the King James Bible, and I'm going to wait until the end of the story, and then I'm going to read it to you, and then, like Paul Harvey, you'll know the rest of the story. So anyway, he would, uh, he said, in my prayers, I was always telling the Lord, you know, that, uh, that uh, this verse of scripture was always in my mind, and... Uh, and I really needed to be relieved of the burden because he said, you know, I was telling the Lord, you know my heart and everything, and you know that I have bad thoughts at times, so I'm not totally a good person. One morning, he said that he was on his way to work, and uh, this was prying on his mind, and he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, you've got to relieve me of this. And there was this gas station that he always stopped to uh, gas his vehicle up. And he said, I pulled in there. And that was back during the days when, when you pulled into a gas station, and an, an attendant came out and filled up your tank. And he said, uh, the attendant knew me and spoke my name and filled my tank up. And then he came back to the window, and when I was paying him, uh, he was acting strange. And I asked him, I said, you know, what's your problem? And he said, well, he said, I'm not a person that, uh, you know, that carries uh, rumors or anything like that. But he said, there's something that's just prying on my mind that I've got to tell you about, preacher. And so he said, what's that? And he said, well... There was a guy in here the other day, and he was saying some terrible things about you. <laughs> so the preacher, he said he knew that the Lord had answered his prayers, and he said, I instantly got out of the car, 
and hooped and hollered and shouted all over the parking lot of that uh, gas station. And uh, the gas station attendant thought he had lost his mind. And then he came up and he told him, and he said, this is my favorite scripture. And it's from Luke chapter 6, verse 26, and it reads, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Well, thank you for listening to that story. We'll see you so long. Bye-bye.